Good Tuesday morning, everybody. Back to work and back to school. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick check of your forecast. As we look into the next several days, we have a brief downturn in the temperatures heading our direction, but not exactly what you would call an Arctic blast. That would be nice, but that's not going to be happening anytime soon. So some pretty steamy conditions across much of the Mid-South as we get into the next several days. We'll talk about that in the forecast coming up here in just a little bit. If you're just joining us, if you've never been around for our exclusive exclusive video weather blog before drop your location and whatever weather reports you've got into the comments section we'll read off as many of those as we can coming up here in just a few minutes if you can't stick around for the whole forecast that's cool blue bar at the bottom of your screen that's where the forecast is scrolling on by or you can get the seven day forecast and a ton more weather information by going to wreg.com slash weather and we'll keep you updated online as well as on air more on Dorian more on the very busy tropics and more on your forecast all coming up here in just a little bit so stay tuned for more we've got a ton to talk about for this morning of course the big weather story is dorian it is just hovering off the coast of florida it has been downgraded to a category three but that is still considered a major hurricane winds of 120 miles per hour and this has been a major disaster for parts of the Bahamas where this storm has not moved in the last 24 hours hardly at all. Now it's expected again to slowly make its way back to the north in the next about 24 hours or so should start picking up speed as another storm system comes in and helps to guide that hurricane up the east coast. But here's the problem. If you're planning on heading down that direction, we have numerous warnings still in effect into and around portions of that area, including the hurricane warnings which are currently in effect for portions of the Bahamas, much of the Florida East Coastal areas, and then beyond that, just farther up and to around the area of South Carolina, we've got some hurricane watches in effect issued again for the possibility of seeing this storm travel up its directions. There are also evacuation orders in effect for coastal Georgia and South Carolina. So again, heading Anywhere, say, east and southeast of Atlanta, you really want to check and see what's going on with the weather because you don't want to be heading into a situation that you're just going to have to turn right back around and leave because of an evacuation order for safety's sake. And again, this is still a threat to South Florida, so this is something that we are going to be watching very carefully. We'll bring you updates as much as we are able to get them from the authorities down this direction, so stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3. Currently, again, we're looking at a pretty hot forecast for the area about four degrees above normal on yesterday's temperatures so pretty close to where we should be today looks to be about a repeat performance back into the mid to upper 80s or so to lower 90s add in that healthy dollop of humidity and you've got some very steamy heat indexes once again so later on this afternoon that's going to be the hottest part of the day kids heading home from school Extra thermos of ice water may not be such a bad idea just to make certain everybody stays hydrated out there to be on the safe side. Oxford, Mississippi from the Crosby Hall cam. Looking at the Ole Miss Student Union, plenty of sunshine out there, 72 degrees with 94% humidity. From Ranger 2015's webcam from the Weather Underground Cam Network in Senatobia, Mississippi, blue skies. A lot of sunshine showing up in northern Mississippi. Olive Branch from former mayor, current meteorologist Sam Reichard. His webcam from the Weather Underground looking back to the north and west, 75 degrees with mostly sunny skies there. From the square in Collierville on the eastern side of Shelby County, plenty of blue skies, 78 degrees with plenty of sunshine. Traffic moving along pretty well around Baptist DeSoto Camera in South Haven, I-55 and Goodman Road territory. Looks pretty good, very good visibility out there and traffic light to moderate for now a little bit heavy as we approach the peak of rush hour around the area of the Hilton East Memphis camera at I-240 and Poplar for this morning. We do have a few showers and thunderstorms well back up to our north up around Chicago and the Great Lakes but that's going to be staying up that direction but what you see here that's our next storm system coming on through that's the cold front that will be arriving in the mid-south as we get into tomorrow that's going to bring us maybe some slightly conditions out there <clears throat> excuse me and also the chances of some rain showers but that's really going to be just about all that we wind up with welcome to everybody who's checking in for this morning norma holden from just a little bit outside the mid-south virginia showing up here uh don howe from washington 
Township, South Jersey. Welcome to the show, and thanks to everybody else for checking in from wherever you happen to be. Remember, drop your location and your weather reports into the comments section. Don't need an address location, but just a city, state will do, and we'll see about what those weather reports are like out there as we go throughout the rest of the morning. Storm Tracker 3S radar not showing anything in the Mid-South area yet. Maybe some sprinkles into tomorrow. 80 degrees already on live real-time WeatherNet 3 at the U of M Earth Sciences in central Memphis. Mid to upper 70s across much of the rest of the area. Running the numbers into the rest of the day today. Past lunchtime, picking up the kids from school, upper 80s to lower 90s. And again, outdoor football, marching band, whatever practice you've got in the way of extracurricular activity outside. Tons of sunshine. Plenty of humidity, good enough for heat injuries out there, so please keep that in mind if you have any plans for getting outdoors for today. Through dinner time tonight, plenty of sunshine, commute to and from work or school, not a problem for today. Temperatures by mid-evening in the mid-80s or so, and looking again at numbers back in the upper 70s past News Channel 3 at 10 with Jim Jagger's complete forecast there. Through tomorrow morning, temperatures back in the lower to mid-70s, Northeast Arkansas, northwest Tennessee, you might briefly dip into the upper 60s for a while, and then that cold front starts to arrive, and as it does, maybe the possibility of some speckles of rainfall out there, but really not much more than that across much of the Mid-South anytime soon. So chances of rainfall just not really being seen across much of the area. Barb Smith from Coffeeville, thanks for joining us uh, for this morning. Alamo, Tennessee, Robbie Westcott, thank you very much for stopping on by. Siobhan Bossy as Libra, welcome from Jonesboro, thanks for joining us. And Selmer, Tennessee, Connie Ramsey Ray, thanks for stopping on by. Temperatures back in the lower 90s today, looking at lower 90s again tomorrow. And again, the front is going to be arriving slowly, gradually. It's not going to come blasting through. It's not going to bring a bunch of cold air with it. That'd be nice, but that's not going to happen. Could be the possibility of some scattered showers out there throughout the entire day. And we're just not talking about a lot of rainfall, about 15% coverage chance at best. So severe weather, that's not an issue, not even thunderstorms at this point in time. Flash flooding, not a problem, but you could see a few speckles of rain on your windshield. You may need the windshield wipers out there as we go into the middle part of Wednesday or so. Now, toward Thursday... There is going to be the possibility of a bit of a downturn in the temperatures coming up as we go into the later portion of the week, but it's not much. Mid-80s at this time of the year, that is almost an Arctic blast, so we should be thankful for just kind of cranking the temperatures back a little bit anyway. In the meantime, enjoy it while you can because it's not sticking around for long. Temperatures back in the lower to mid-90s as we go into the weekend, so bouncing back pretty nicely there. Now, toward the second full week of September, the computer model split. We start to see some of the computer models toward the end of next week heading upwards into the mid to upper 90s for highs. A few other models are pointing downwards into the mid to upper 80s, so that's quite the split going on out there. So whether or not we see that is still a little bit too early to tell for right now. Here's the thing. What we're going to be watching at this time is to see what those models do. In the meantime, we're going to be walking a middle ground on the temperatures here, lower to mid 90s over the course of the next couple of days. So that's going to be the main story for right now. Little of anything changing, bit of a downturn on the temperatures as we go into around the later portion of the week, but it's not much, and that's about as good as it gets for the Mid-South area. There's just really not that much out there in the way of major amounts of cool temperatures coming on through. October, autumn temperatures, they're out there, but we just haven't seen them anytime soon for right now, so just not seeing too much of any hope of anything cooling us off. So hang on, we're getting closer to autumn, but it takes a while for this area of the country to cool off, so stay tuned for updates on that forecast. Dorian, just off the east coast of Florida, very rare, but it is still possible to see these hurricanes sit in place 
and just devastate an area like the Grand Bahamas. So for right now, we're looking again at some pretty, again, heavy rainfall. And if you're heading toward Florida in the next couple of days, this is critical. You do not want to be wandering into a situation where, again, you're just going to have to turn right back around from. So hurricane watches and warnings and evacuation orders, those are in place for a very good reason. So you want to stay tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on that. Now, not only this, but Dorian is not the only storm out there. We've got a potential tropical storm. Number seven is in the Gulf of Mexico, and this should be impacting northeastern Mexico, south of Texas and the Rio Grande. So, so far, this does not look to be a threat to the United States. Now, later on, this might curve back around again, possibly changing our weather at some point in time here in the Mid-South, but that's still several days out. Now, looking a little farther off into the Atlantic, we have two more storm systems out there. We used to have three. One of them did not really survive right off the coast of Africa. This one is going to be the worst threat for right now. This one shows more signs of becoming stronger and a little bit more advanced as we get into the later portions of next week. This one, Invest 92L, an area of investigation, as it's called, looks like it's going to be curving up toward Bermuda and hovering somewhere out about mid-ocean. We nicknamed those things unofficially. They're called fish storms because they're only going to be bothering the fish out there in the ocean. But Bermuda could see a strike from this maybe and some weather problems out of that, but we'll see what happens there. In the meantime, this one does not appear to be a problem. This one, on the other hand, stronger better organized over the next several days. Westerly winds moving it pretty steadily back to the west, just like Dorian was in the last few days. This one could be an issue. It doesn't have, again, a designation just yet, like a number, and it's not strong enough for a name. You need to get 39 miles per hour before you get to tropical storm status and get your name this time around, we're 30 miles per hour winds on the inside of the storm, so right now it does not have one. But this just demonstrates that you need to pay attention to what is going on into and around the Mid-South and beyond that. Because, again, this is we're, we're approaching the peak of hurricane season. That's going to be coming up September the 10th. And we still have late September, October, and all of November to go through. So this is heating up. Literally, the ocean's heating up and helping to power these things right in time for the peak of hurricane season and could be getting even worse as we go throughout the next several days and weeks. So it is imperative to stay tuned to get your weather updates before you travel and know what might be a problem later on. So please keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on anything that happens out there. The weather experts, again, at your disposal to give you an idea as to what may be happening and what may be going on. Also, stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center at nhc.noaa.gov, or just go to Hurricane hurricane.gov and they will give you more information about what it looks like out there. So again, what we're seeing for right now doesn't look like a major threat except for Dorian and we'll be keeping our eyes on that over the next several days. All right, one more check of the forecast. We got to hop off here so we can do the 825 update here. We are live online just into Tuesday morning and temperatures again already on the mild side out there with numbers back into the lower to mid 80s already in parts of the metro area at 8 o'clock in the morning. Temperatures back in the lower 90s later on this afternoon. Few clouds out there, not much more than that, and things look again to be pretty quiet throughout the rest of the week. Maybe a chance of showers into tomorrow, and that's going to be about as much as we see for right now. That'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. We will have another late edition later this morning at about 1045 this morning, depending on when we get done uh, recording updates here in the studio. So again, stay tuned for more on my Facebook page coming up later on. We'll also be on Twitter. We'll also be on Periscope at 1045 this morning. So multiple ways for you to get your weather. No excuse not to be informed and to make certain you know what's going on out there. So stay tuned for more with News Channel 3. Questions, concerns, ideas about what we could feature on here? Complaints, if you absolutely must, again, drop me a line at austin.onic at wreg.com or, again, drop by our website, wreg.com slash weather to get more information about what's going on throughout the Mid-South and points beyond travel information, pollen and air quality, 
all kinds of great information about severe weather. It's all available again, wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to tune in for more on that. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thank you for joining us for this morning. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the morning and into this afternoon. Tim and Jim have your forecast later on tonight on News Channel 3, first at 4. Thanks for joining us this morning.